Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Good morning, church, on this sun, Easter Sunday, on the most extraordinary Holy Week in memory. A week at home, sheltering in place, and yet we come together in this time to praise God for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ and to praise God for the ways in which God makes the ordinary extraordinary. God takes ordinary water and it becomes baptism. God takes bread and grape juice. It becomes communion. And God takes the monotony or the never-ending stress of being at home. And together, we'll, we will make that ordinary time into an extraordinary hour together today. This Easter... We are partnering, uh, we have something so special this Easter. This Easter, we are partnering with churches across four states to help us feel better connected today. Parts of today's Easter service are from First Church, filmed in people's homes. But others are from churches across the connection uh, who all contributed to uh, common videos and sermons and music that are being shared simultaneously, right this very moment, everywhere. Wow! And get this, our very own First Church Choir is one of those videos. So churches across four states are having their spirits uplifted by our choir's music. Wow! Friends, what a blessing it is for us to be together today. I invite you to center your hearts, to join in the liturgy, the singing, so that something extraordinary can happen for you today. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Cristo ha resucitado. Si ha resucitado. Hallelujah. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Oito tu a Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. 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 Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Risen risen indeed. Hallelujah.
Happy Easter, everyone, from the Clark family in Eugene, Oregon. I'm Carlene. This is Junia, Josh, and Bennett. And we're here to sing with you, uh, This is the Day, um, from Psalm 118. Versions of this song have been sung on Easter for many centuries, and you probably know this one already. We also have some motions to go with it, some of which are sign language, some are just, you know, jazz hands. But we want you to get up from where you are at at home and uh, join in singing and moving with us. All right, we ready to go? Ready. Ready. All right. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Happy Easter, everybody! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! He is risen. He is risen indeed. Listen to these words from the Gospel of John, chapter twenty, verses one through eighteen. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus had loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw the two angels in white, one standing just where Jesus' body had been laying, and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the cardinal, she said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. My name is Elaine Stanowski. I'm the United Methodist Bishop 
of the states of Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. And I'm joining this worship service from the town of Roslyn, the, where coal was king in the central Cascade Mountains of Washington state. In this time of physical uh, distancing, I greet you from my heart to your heart. Wherever you are, whoever you are with, and whoever you are separated from today, I'm so glad that you joined us to share music and prayers and to remember again the good news that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. Not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or anything that is created. By showing up for worship, you put yourself on the side of life at a time when a tiny virus is bringing individuals, the nation, and the whole world to its knees. In a moment, I'm going to ask you a question. It'll be familiar, but with a little twist. It's not a test. You'll know the answer. I want you to convince me with the way you answer. It may seem odd to shout your answer at home with uh, where you're sitting alone or where you're with one or two other people. So I've recruited my husband and able assistant, Clint, to help you with your part. So, are you ready? Okay. Is Christ risen? Christ is risen indeed. Thank you. What difference does the resurrection of Jesus make when so many people are dying? I want you to imagine with me a scene with our three young sons uh, making up a game using a toddler toy of large plastic beads that you could click together or pop apart. Can you imagine that? You may remember that kind of bead. The game was to hold up two beads and to ask, together or to part? If they were clicked together, the answer was, together. But if they were popped apart, the answer was to part. But soon you didn't even have to have any beads. It could be anything. Let's take my hands. Together or to part. Together or to part. Oh, you're very quick. Today on Easter Sunday, we come asking the same questions about life and community. Together or to part. As we're keeping distance and refraining from worship or a picnic or team sports, are we together or to part? With Jesus, with God, with each other. Clearly this morning we are not huddled on a chill hill uh, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and singing Hosanna. Or in a sanctuary full of Easter lilies. No, instead, you are worshiping as you look at a screen or listen on the telephone. Are we together or to part? Well, all the hard evidence says that we are to part in the sense that we're not physically together. But we've got a great length, all of us, to be together by whatever means we can find. So here we are. And even as I record this message in a room in a house I share only with Clint and Molly the dog, you are with me. I carry you in my heart today as I have all week as I prepared this message. The other people that you see in worship service have been with us from all the places across four states where they taped their parts. And now you bring us all together by joining remotely from your to part places. It's not as good as being together to see each other and hear each other's voices, to share a handshake or a hug, but it's a lot better than being to part. The hard evidence says that we are to part, but the testimony of our hearts says we are together, by choice, by affection, out of hope and longing. Now, how does together and to part, help us think about the resurrection and how it makes a difference when people are dying. When Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, and descended to the dead, he was to part. Listen to Matthew's description. When Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last 
At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split open. The gospel writer gives us hard evidence that Jesus was to part. Those who were there could not doubt that Jesus had died. They watched it. They heard the nails. They felt the weight of his dead body. They saw the guards seal the entrance of the tomb with a mighty stone. No doubt about it. Jesus was dead to part. And yet the disciples' hearts still beat with the intensity of his presence, his teaching, his defiance, his compassion. He had shown them life, given them hope they had never had, freed them from fear and hatred of strangers and foreigners, hoarding an attitude of me first before anybody else. He had taught them to love. Now the Bible says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It was faith that was forming in Mary and Simon Peter after Jesus died. They knew without a shadow of a doubt that they had been changed forever by his love, that they would carry his message with them throughout their lives. Mary didn't expect to find Jesus alive when she went to the tomb that early morning. She went because she knew that something of Jesus' way lived in her. She went out of love and as a witness to the life that he had let loose in the world. She went with the knowledge of what she knew in her heart. And when she found Jesus alive, do you remember what he said to her? Don't hold on to me. I have not yet gone up to the Father. Don't hold on to me? Are you kidding me? Did he really say that? What did he mean? Don't you find it amazing that Jesus spoke so directly to the very unusual circumstances that we find ourselves in today? He might as well have said, keep your distance. You don't need to touch me to know what you know in your heart. That I am alive. That I love you. That we are together. Nothing can separate us. Mary and then Simon Peter and the other disciples came to know and to understand in a way that is deeper than the hard evidence that whatever it was about Jesus that drew them to him and drew crowds to him and that threatened the powers that be did not die on the cross. It was alive in each of them and it was the light that shines in the darkness and is never overcome. The disciples discovered the resurrection in the very shadow of Jesus' death. The story of the resurrection of Jesus is God shouting to all God's beloved creatures, Death has not won! Life is stronger than death. We do not live to ourselves we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live in the Lord. If we die, we die in the Lord. So, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. What difference does the resurrection of Jesus make when so many people are dying? It shows us that in addition to the hard evidence, we have heart evidence the catch of our breath, tears that well up, the way the view of a majestic mountain or a wide and gracious plain stops us in our tracks, takes our breath away, or a sudden impulse to generosity that just overtakes us. All are evidence that we are together with one another in God's broad and beautiful creation. As the world groans in travail, I offer you the good news of Jesus Christ. Our lives come from the spirit God breathed into the world at creation, from the love born to the world in Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that connects us to one another at a depth that no disease, no distance, and not even death can touch. 
The story of life, passed from person to person through the ages, takes its root in us. It calls, connects, and mends us together, even when the hard evidence has left us to part and alone. God bless you, witnesses of life, menders of the tears and the tears. God bless you, cultivators of love, of community. We are Easter people. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Together, together, or to part. Together. together. Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ.
Good morning. As we enter our prayer time together, I invite you to take a deep breath, move aside the distractions, and center yourself for our time with God. Divine, eternal presence, creator of the universe, hear our prayers. We waited through 40 days of confession and reflection. We celebrated, waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna. We remembered, preparing bread, pouring the cup, offering thanks, and sharing the meal. We relived the tragedy, betrayal, denial, desertion. We witnessed death and were left confused, broken-hearted, believing that the story had come to a tragic end. But we were wrong. Death did not win. And today we celebrate the truth. Today we sing of renewed hope. We shout with overwhelming joy because we know the good news of Easter. Christ is risen Christ is risen indeed. But this year, Holy One, we empathize more than ever with the disciples as they walked through the drama of those days, without understanding and unaware of the outcome. Some were alone, wrapped in silence. Others in groups of two or three, afraid to leave their homes. So many questions, so many rumors, so much confusion and uncertainty. Everyone in the same troubled space, both together and alone. And yet, those followers of Jesus supported one another. They joined together in their hour of greatest need and with each one doing their part for the sake of the whole. Help us, Holy God, to learn from them Help us to join together as well and to see both the opportunity and the urgency in our current situation. We have an unimaginable chance to cross physical and cultural and political boundaries, to join together, to share resources, to support those with greatest needs, and to offer peace and hope in the midst of chaos. Our creativity has blossomed with new ways to be in relationship, to learn, to work, to serve. God, use our energy individually and collectively to bring courage and calm to our families, our neighbors, our entire human community. Help us to share the good news of Easter. God, make us especially aware of our responsibility to those you call the least within our family, those individuals who are most vulnerable and in greatest danger, especially now. Let their voices be heard and honored. Protect them, breathe hope into them, and give us both strength and compassion in serving them in seeing that their needs for food and shelter, for physical safety and medical care, for compassion and love that all these needs are met. Make us actively be the message of Easter. On this Easter morning, we thank you, Divine Creator, for the abundance of gifts you have so freely given us and for the love with which you surround us. We thank you for the life and sacrifice of your Son, our Redeemer. We thank you for the assurance that your Spirit is with us today and always. Now fill us with your strength and guide us with your wisdom. Empower us to live the Easter message today and always. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. It's people sharing what they have that make it possible for the church to care for its own members, but more importantly, to, to tend to the needs of the community of its neighbors. It's tough though when the church has been closed for several weeks and many people give their gifts uh, in the offering plate on a Sunday morning. 
So I have three ways for you to uh, make sure that the church is able to stay open and to continue its vital ministries to the community. First, today on Easter Sunday, give as you are able to the ministries of your local United Methodist Church or whatever church you are part of. Check the church's website or its Facebook page uh, for instructions or just put a check in the mail. Second, you might want to give a special Easter offering to the Greater Northwest Area-Wide Fund for Families. Local churches partner with community groups to offer targeted financial support to neighbors on the margins who are most vulnerable to the financial impacts of COVID-19. Please follow the instructions on the screen. And finally, looking ahead, if you expect to receive a CARES Act stimulus check that you don't really need because your income is secure, I hope you'll let us help you pass it along to someone who needs it more than you do. Watch during the weeks ahead to learn how to participate in Pass the Stimulus Along. Thank you for your generous contributions, for your presence in this service for your prayers for all people who suffer this day and in the days ahead. Thank you for your generosity. You and I can be Christ alive and caring for people today. Alleluia. Friends, Easter is not a day, it is a season. Easter in the church lasts for 50 days. It is not a moment, it is a movement toward something new. And I have three invitations to give you in this Easter season. First is that our sermon series will be called No Turning Back. We have spent so much of Lent lamenting what we have lost, lamenting our lack of shared space together, shared worship in the same room, uh, high fives and hugs and, and that Thai restaurant you love and sports and school and travel and loved ones. It's a lot. But we are a resurrection people, and Easter marks a turn for us. No matter how long we are sheltering in place, we can now start to envision and embrace who we will, will become when it is over, because we will not be who we were. Our economy, our society, our relationships will have changed. Uh, we cannot go back. But together, we can journey together through stages of grief and emerge on the other side, living a resurrection life. Every Sunday in Easter, uh, April and May, we'll journey together into the unknown. The second is super easy and very fun. Get a rock, a, a stone, uh, and put it in your windowsill or porch, or place where maybe the light will shine on it every day. Stones are important in the Easter season and Holy Week. On Palm Sunday, Jesus told us that these stones will shout on Easter Sunday. God rolls away the rock covering the tomb to let the resurrection break forth like a, a butterfly from a cocoon. These rocks will remind us of this Holy Week together. And you know what? The first Sunday that we're able to worship together in the same space, I invite you to bring this rock. And we will take, and we'll take all of these rocks and we'll build an altar uh, with these and celebrate what we will create together anew. You know, kids can paint on the rock, uh, adults can write you know, words of encouragement or just leave them plain. But these Easter stones are a simple action 
that will bring your church family to mind ever present like a rock in days of joy or in days when you need comfort. Finally, we are starting 30 days of gratitude where there will be a word of the day and you'll be invited to send pictures or post on social media uh, uh, pictures that relate to that word of the day. It starts tomorrow. Look at our Facebook and website for those words of the day and find a picture you want to take with your phone or maybe a picture that you've taken previously and share it with us as we cover our timelines and our inboxes with gratitude for who we are and what we have. Wow, we all have other studies each week and morning devotions and community circles to get connected and children and youth activities. Uh, Check out our website uh, for those. But friends, this Easter season, I am thankful for you. And for now, I invite you to stand as you are able and join in our traditional Easter hymn as we close out our time together. I don't think you can sing Easter people raise your voices silently. So join in with gusto because Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Go forth and know that God who created you, Jesus who redeemed you, and the spirit which sustains you is with you at every moment. And may that bring you an Easter peace, a resurrection that will burst forth from the tomb and carry you to new life. Amen. We're scattered all across great distances today. And so I invite everybody to participate in the benediction and blessing as we end by stretching your hands with your palms outward as a sign and a reminder that we are all blessed and we are all a blessing to one another. Know that the creative power of the one who made your hands is in your very DNA. With these hands, make music, sew masks, prepare food, paint pictures, teach others. Know that the love of the risen Christ will nurture and strengthen you in all things. With these hands, share your gifts by writing checks, clicking on Zoom links, embracing soap in order to protect others. Know that the wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing through our lives, connecting us in God's love as a body of Christ. With these hands, Write cards, send emails, make phone calls. Reach out in love to share the message that Christ is risen and that God's love is victorious. Know always that the hands, the arms, the heart of God will hold you always in love, in peace, and in the joy of the resurrection. Alleluia.